what is next for Man United? I'm sat here still crying, still contemplating at our loss 3-2 at home against Galatasaray this past Tuesday. And I just think to myself, you know what? It's not going to get any better anytime soon. Because the crux of our issue, and I'm seeing some people on my timeline, especially on Twitter, some of my fellow Manchester United fans on the timeline, are really, you know, exhausting themselves, trying to make really rational, nuanced, balanced um, views and opinions and arguments for our current predicament. But I think the issue that we have at hand is that you can't have a balanced, nuanced, common sense, rational discussion, debate, or whatever concerning Man United because we're not a normal club. Normal clubs, you can talk about normal things. But our club is run so backwards, all those normal, rational things go out the window. The current debate now that is currently, you know, occupying most of our minds as Man United fans is should we get rid of the manager? In normal clubs, you probably would have got rid of the manager. If the results aren't going for you, if the performances aren't going for you, if there's unrest in the changing room, right? And if there's, a, you know, maybe the fans are not happy with the style of play or there's not a lot of good transfers, fair enough. You get rid of the manager. You get the new manager bounce and you continue from there. But unfortunately with United, you can't do that because why? We're owned by the Glazers. The Glazers have had nearly or just over 20 years of epic mismanagement of Man United to the point where we were only successful as a club when we had the greatest manager of all time, Sir Alex Ferguson, as our manager. Since he retired, since he walked away from the club, we've only been going on a somewhat downward trajectory. And that is no coincidence. It's been under the stewardship of the Glazers. They don't care about winning trophies. They don't care about playing good football. They don't care about evolving and developing the club. The what they care about is taking money out of this club, which is fine. It's their prerogative. I don't like it as a fan, but fair enough. But the reason that that's an issue for us debating as Man United fans is that it's hard to have a common sense argument about what they're doing when they're not running the club like a regular owner would run the club. So if you try to get rid of Ten Hag, the manager, unfortunately, that doesn't remove the problems that Ten Hag was having. All the issues Ten Hag was having in terms of signing players, in terms of getting rid of players, in terms of evolving and developing the team and how we play and getting a hand on the changing room, all those things are a direct reason, are a direct consequence of the terrible ownership. The terrible ownership doesn't allow him to get rid of some players. So the changing room is full of players from six or seven flipping managers ago. Right? A hodgepodge of a squad. That's not going to be good for morale. He can't sign the players that he wants, the quality that he wants. So then he has to rely on his own black book. And his own black book is, guess what? Players he's already got experience with. That's why you're seeing all these players from the Dutch league or players from teams that he's managed beforehand. So you can't even blame him on that. He gives you his one or two main priorities. You don't get his priorities. Then he obviously goes to his list because he doesn't trust you guys to, to, to give him any options because you can't get him the ones that he actually wants. So I don't hold him. I don't hold that against him. Then you have the really thorny issue of the lack of cohesion in our team. We don't press well. We don't play as a team. It's very individualistic. A lot of the players have big egos. And I think a lot of that has to do with some players feeling like they're, like they're untouchable. Ericsson Hogg, of course, plays a role in it because he picks some of these players. But some of our better players or some of our players in the squad have been here for a while. He can't get rid of them and they know that. They know that they're probably more powerful or they have more authority in that club than he does. So they can throw their toys out the pram. They can act like divas. They can do whatever they want. And they know most likely he's going to get fired before anybody else. Look what's happened with Jadon Sancho. The Jadon Sancho situation is a good example of it. A player who has a disagreement with a coach. The coach is not training enough, so you can't play. Calls him out publicly, which probably was uncalled for. The player then goes and releases a statement and says, hey, don't believe what you read. I'm training hard. I want to play for the team. The coach sees that as disrespectful, tells him to apologise. He says, I'm not apologising. In a normal team, the club would step in and mediate and get the player to apologise or get them out of the club. That's what they will do, regardless of who it is. Even though I love Jadon Sancho, a big club would mediate between the manager and the player. They would figure out a way to get the player to play and apologise, or apologise and play first, or apologise first and then play. Or they'd sell them in January if there was no ability to kind of mediate and come to some sort of re um, reconciliation. But not this club. They let him deal with it on his own the manager, the player refuses to apologise because he knows deep down the manager probably isn't going to last until Christmas and then we go and continue again. 
So we can't have rational discussions about United because we're not owned by normal, decent owners. We're just not. So in my opinion, I feel like getting rid of the manager will be the bad way to go. Because if we get rid of Derek Ten Hag, all the focus will be on getting a new manager. It'll be about, you know, sexifying some new guy who's the new person who plays a certain type of way. There'll be all this, uh, you know, hype around signings. That's going to fix everything. All these nonsense things will happen. And it will, if, if unfortunately, I feel like, put a bandage on a deep, deep wound that is the Glazers. Until we get rid of those guys. I've said it plenty of times. Actually, I need to talk about that. On Twitter Spaces, I know some of you don't even use Twitter Spaces, you don't flipping care about this, but I do, so I'm going to talk to you about it. On Twitter Spaces, there's a football spaces, you know, that also exists in that community. And people host these Twitter Spaces where people debate, you know, via voice chat about certain things about the club. And I love the phrase that people use, two phrases, let me land, and also, I've always said. I love how people say, I've always said, you guys know what I'm about, when it's like, bro, some of us, I know me, I don't really pay attention to the speakers apart from the ones I really follow. I'm not keeping abreast of what they said, who they said it. I just follow the things I follow the time that I'm on. But some people have this really strange sense of self-importance where they think everybody remembers what they said. We don't remember what you said. Just say what you said and keep it moving. So anyway, going back to what I said before, <laughs> I think it's important that we don't get rid of the manager because it's going to take the folks away from getting rid of the owners. And until the owners leave, until the owners sell, right, or in some parallel strange universe, they crash their plane inside of a mountain, right, God forbid, or not, right, until that happens... We are never going to be a successful football club ever again. Until we get rid of those owners, we will never win a major trophy ever again. I think the history has shown it. Since we've had the Glazers in charge, we've won one FA Cup, maybe a couple of League Cups and a Europa League eh? and some Europa League titles. That's it. But I don't count them to be major trophies apart from the FA Cup, which we won once. Until we get rid of the flipping Glazers, we will not challenge for the Champions League and we will not challenge for major trophies, the league title, and the FA Cup in this country. It's not happening. You can't be successful with managers who don't care. It's impossible, especially with that toxic dressing room. It doesn't happen. So, United fans, please, for the love of God, yes, I know Aiton Hag isn't doing a good job at the moment. I know the style of play is non-existent. I know it's depressing watching us. I know it kills you every time you see us line up with Rashford and Bruno in the middle. Casemiro is even... Imagine, Casemiro, bro. Casemiro is even lowering himself to our standards now. We seem to have this fucking effect when we sign players who are half decent. Suddenly, they acquiesce to our level. He came in amazingly the first season. Now, suddenly, he's time to play like everybody else. Right? I know it's depressing to see our Nana in, the, in, the, in, the, in between the sticks and you think to yourself, why do we get rid of fucking um, David De Gea? I know it's depressing to still have Maguire and Johnny Evans flopping on the bench at his age. I know. But please... The focus should be on the Glazers. Focus all the attention on the Glazers. I beg of you. There's some there's some encouraging fucking news regarding that. The Qatari group, um, which obviously obviously includes Sheikh Jassim, that wants to buy the entirety of the club, which is mostly most United fans want a full sale. We want the club to be sold in full. We don't want the Glazers to be involved in any capacity. I would go as far as saying whoever takes over the club should fire everybody on the executive suite of our club i think that's going to happen anyway whenever someone is a new ownership usually they get their own people in but i don't want even them to get their own leader to lead the, the group of executives no get rid of the entire boardroom entire boardroom clean sweep start again that's what i purposely would want personally before even doing the whole manager thing and the players thing come in and get rid of the entire boardroom you know make sure you change some personnel and key positions wherever it may be but they all need to be gone so whoever takes over, full boardroom change or nothing. No Glazers involvement whatsoever. So that's the encouraging thing. The sad thing is that Jim Ratcliffe, who's allegedly meant to be a United fan and who knows the pain that we have with the Glazers, is now offering to um, invest a uh, a percentage. I think it's like 25%. He wants only partial, partial ownership of the club because he feels like partial ownership is the only way he's going to get over the line. I, I've kind of always felt from the beginning that the Glazers never wanted to sell him for anyway. That, that was my assumption or my feeling because it's gone It's gone on too long. It's approaching nearly a year, I think, since they put it up for sale and we still have no idea when it's actually going to go through or not, right? And they didn't really technically put it up for sale. They were fielding interest in investment. They used very interesting words. But I've always had a feeling that the Glazers never wanted to sell in full 
because owning United is probably, you know, it's an amazing asset to have. It's probably their most valuable asset and they can continually keep taking money out of it. It makes a lot of sense. But I always felt like what they would want is that they would want for us, ironically enough, to improve on the pitch, wait for that to happen. Because they're probably thinking football's a cycle, our cycle will come, even though most of the time, good teams aren't just made on the pitch, they're made in the boardroom. You have to start by doing good work there and then that trickles down, usually. But hey, what do I know, right? I'm just a random guy talking in my mom's, be in my mom's flipping basement. But I felt like what they always wanted was someone to come in and overpay for partial ownership let's say somebody like Jim Ratcliffe pays four million for 25 percent which is insane because if I'm not mistaken um Sheikh Jassim and that Qatari group are offering six billion around that mark for the whole ownership so someone will come in with an obscene amount of money for partial ownership then they'll invest it into the club they'd redo the stadium maybe they'd redo the training ground maybe some money for transfers then we might fucking scam a champions league or something or a league cup or sorry or a league or whatever something happened along those kind of lines right we scum a trophy then that scumming of a trophy will add more value to the club then they could then go and sell the remaining 75 percent for guess what way more than what it's worth too so you could basically double dip you could get the 4 million for the 25%, you pocket that. Then after a number of years, maybe in between that we become more successful, you sell the remainder 75%, let's say for fucking 10 million. 10 billion, sorry. So now all of a sudden you're looking at making nearly 20 billion, right? For full ownership of the club when before you were offered 6 billion. That's probably how they're thinking. But in the process, who, 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 who suffers? Who? Us. Us, the fans. And I absolutely hate it. I hate it so much, man. There's no amount of people that I hate more in this world, apart from probably Dark Side Phil, than the Glazers. I absolutely detest the fucking Glazers and I can't wait for them to finally leave our club because they are abhorrent and they've destroyed the soul of my club to the point where I don't even buy flipping club merch anymore. I don't buy it. If I do, I buy it from flipping my sisters in flipping Shenzhen. I don't ever buy official merchandise from the store anymore. I don't follow the accounts. I'm not liking what they post. It's annoying. You can't even engage with your club because you feel like you're contributing to the days of staying longer, which is dumb, but that's how you feel. You feel like you're contributing to them staying longer. You don't put any money in their pockets. So they've ruined my experience of being a fucking fan. I want them gone. And anyway, this news courtesy of the plug um, on Twitter, sorry, the United plug, it says the Kotari group will not increase its current offer. Despite the threat of a new offer from Jim Ratcliffe, sources close to the group say the news of Ratcliffe's restructured offer constitutes another means to pressure intended um, to make the, them increase the offer. So they're feeling like they are putting out that story about the 25% because they want the Qatari group to increase the offer and give them over the odds. Most likely, the Glazers probably want 10 billion, I'm assuming. Judging by how greedy they are, they probably want 10 bill. 10 bill and they walk away. But until then, they'll keep fucking bleeding the club dry. Um, and then I guess because we keep complaining online too, I would imagine they, in a backwards way of their thinking, right? In their fucking lizard, leechy brain of thinking, they probably think when we complain, it actually puts more pressure on the Qatari group to increase their offer too. Maybe. I don't know. But either way, I want them out. Especially after watching Newcastle fucking thump PSG at home 4-1. We see what can happen when good owners come in, take over. And again, look how Newcastle have done it. They didn't even do it in a crazy way that we all assumed they would do it. They've done it with a mix of, you know, quote unquote, local talent, a mix of buying players. They've stepped, you know, they, they, they kept faith with Eddie Howe and shown him a lot of trust and stuff. And he stepped up. The players have stepped up. There's a good vibes around the fucking place. I'm sure all those Geordies, you know, were fucking going crazy last night. Probably bare people called in sick. Probably everybody's got the coke sniffles the next morning. They're loving it. They're loving supporting their club. And that's what I want. That's all I want. Is that much to ask for? I don't think so. But hey, what do I know? What do I bloody 